Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps real-time interviews. Now, we have a profile with us today and in this profile, the person has around 4 to 5 years of IT experience and around 2 years of experience in DevOps and cloud-related services. Now, this video is dedicated to solely Azure Kubernetes Service or AKS. In this video, we're gonna uh, question him around AKS only and nothing else. And I have also provided my inputs. I have also told him like what I would have answered if the same question would have been asked to me. And yeah, this would be all in this video. Again, uh, I would like to request that please do subscribe to the channel. That would because that would really support me to create more content like this. And if you're seeing this video on Twitter, Instagram or any other social media profile, check out the pin comment or the description section to get the link of the main video. So take out your pen and paper. And without further ado, let's get started. So, uh, according to your profile, you have worked on uh, Kubernetes and you said that uh, you have used Azure Kubernetes service, right? AKS? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, in, in a very layman's term, what do I understand by uh, Azure Kubernetes service? It's a, a managed Kubernetes service uh, that is uh, deployed on Azure. The uh, master uh, or the what is it called um, your control plane mm -hmm. the control plane is managed by Azure and is totally transparent to you and you manage only your nodes uh, parts with your node pools etc and your configuration networking uh, and the rest of it so basically that's Okay. What AKS is. Uh, since you have worked on AKS, uh, have you ever worked on self-managed Kubernetes clusters? No. Sorry, no or yes? No. No. no okay, happens. okay. But do you know the difference between both of them? Self-managed and AKS? Uh, AKS comes, as I said, with the control plane uh, totally managed and they have other services on top of it. So you have load balancers and you have um, integrations with uh, Azure services uh, that you don't have uh, in a self-managed Kubernetes cluster. So, so many things are um, already done for you in a Kubernetes, in an AKS cluster, like the load balancing, the scaling, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, authentication, like uh, RBAC management, all that stuff is already managed by Azure and already um, uh, configured, but you know, self uh, managed. You have to configure <coughs> all of the other tools. Yeah. Um, in other words, we can say that uh, it'll abstract the complexity of managing underlying infrastructure. And you said that scaling, right? Uh, then provisioning, updates. So basically, the yes. idea is to allow the developers to focus on application deployment more and management. I mean, cluster part, Azure takes care. So yeah, that's that's one thing. There's still a part that is uh, managed by the admins. Yeah. Uh, although half of it is by by Azure, but yeah. Uh, as I said, the control plane, yes, totally. Mm -hmm. The nodes are when you need to do an upgrade, it's still done by the admins. So you still manage the uh, the upgrades of your nodes, uh, and you still manage uh, the configuration of those tools. Um, like the scaling, you have to configure it, even though it's there for you, but you have to still configure it for everything. Okay. Um, so consider a scenario. Um, so you might, might have bought, uh, things on Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So consider, uh, a period in which, uh, let's say today is what, uh, uh 28th of August and, uh, on the 1st of uh, September, a huge sale has to come. So you are expecting the 10 times uh, traffic on, on the website and the uh, website is using underlying uh, infrastructure as AKS. Mm -hmm. What would you do? What are the measures that you will take? Um, to uh, uh, increase the limit of uh, 
of nodes that can scale up uh, and uh, to tweak the scaling um, uh, thresholds. Um, apart from that, you'll have to go to the application side to to manage how the application itself is scaling. Okay, so we have this um, built-in uh, horizontal pod scaling, and uh, uh, so how how does that happen? Any idea? Uh, the it will set based on uh, some conditions, mm -hmm. uh, either you. Um, your uh, CPU usage, your RAM usage, or maybe the number of connections uh, through your ingress, stuff like that, that will add more pods as you need them. Okay, okay. So when we say that AKS uh, handles high availability, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, what is that supposed to mean and how, how AKS handles it? Um, it's on the uh, node side, so if you're using high availability, that means you're using um, scale sets uh, or um, availability zones in Azure itself to create your uh, covariance cluster. And on top of that, you're having multiple nodes uh, in each node pool. In case one node is failing, you'll have another one that is uh, replacing it, or another one that is still there to pick up the load. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, how are you folks uh, uh, achieve uh, rolling updates in AKS? Um, we have uh, we have multiple nodes, so. Uh, my laptop. Uh, we have multiple nodes, so we will go, um, I think we set like 25%. So we'll go node by node. Uh, the nodes will drain, then we'll do the updates. Uh, we'll uh, uh, then come back online. The load will uh, go to uh, the new node, then another node will drain, and etc. Until all the nodes are done. Okay, okay. Um, we have a, a sidecar container in AKS, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what exactly it is? Sidecar container is a container that lives in the pod uh, next to your main container uh, that does. Uh, functions um, that cannot be separated from the main container. It can do login, it can do uh, uh, some kind of agent, uh, proxy, multiple uh, usage can be there, but it's a function that cannot be separated from the main container's uh, uh, function. Okay. Um Based on this, uh, let's consider a scenario, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, let's say you have a web application running in a pod, okay? Within an AKS cluster. You want to okay. add a feature that logs all incoming requests and responses just for monitoring purposes. How would you do okay. it? Uh, logs all requests. So, Depending on what you're using in the f in front of it, like are you using ingress? Are you using an, a proxy? Are you using what type of application is it? Is it like a microservice? Is it, a, uh, is it API based? Is it something else? Um, you either log on that proxy uh, that will have all the requests, or um, if it's the Nginx is part of your application, then you will uh, get the metrics from your pod. Uh, basically, you'll have an endpoint that is, uh, which is a service that is slash metrics or something that you can uh, plug into to scrape uh, with Prometheus, for example. If there are logs that are sent to STD out, you can scrape them. 
by uh, other tools like Loki, for example. Um, and you can even have uh, the application send traces to another uh, tool to be able to have the whole visibility on the application. Uh, so, uh, when I said that based on the previous answer, if I want to use Sidecar over here in the same scenario, uh, uh, how would you yeah. do it? So, you can have an agent uh, that is on the Sidecar that scrapes the logs. For example, if the application... Okay, let's say... Uh, for, for instance, there is a, we have an application, a Windows application that is using .NET, and the developer says we cannot use STD out mm -hmm. login for some reason, and uh, we're not able to scrape the STD out, and our main um, login system will only scrape STD out of all ports. Now, to be able to solve that, we added a sidecar container that has an agent mm -hmm. that scrapes specific files on the container. So it will have a, a mount point that is in common with the main container, and it will scrape all of those file, log files that are logged locally in the container. Okay, so um, I'll just give my two cents on this problem statement. So uh, generally a lot of people, what they do is they might go and modify the application code to include the logic that is, uh, that'll give you some logs, okay? If you want to avoid that, uh, you can create a separate sidecar container and it'll handle all the logging. So uh, this sidecar container can uh, intercept any anything that is incoming or outgoing request, uh, extracting relevant information and send the logs to a central logging service if we have, okay? So in this setup, uh, the sidecar container and the main application container can work independently and can be updated or scaled individually if you need them. So this separation of concerns also make it easier to manage and uh, uh, maintain the different functionalities without affecting the stability of this main application. So that, that's my two cents on this. But uh, independent, like a, a sidecar container is, not, is never really independent because if you restart your application or if your application fails or whatever, your sidecar is also gone. It has the same life cycle as your main application. So, yeah, in but, that sense, never independent. But uh, when you want to update or scale individually, you can do that. Okay. You can do that. Um, okay. Okay, uh, have you ever upgraded uh, the Kubernetes version in an AKS cluster? Yes. Okay, how have you done it? Um, since we have uh, the cluster managed by Kubernetes, uh, we do it through Kubernetes. Um, sorry, by Terraform. Okay. So uh, through Terraform, we deployed the cluster. So we manage the upgrade also on Terraform. So it will be just changing the version and uh, Actually, there are multiple versions specified in Terraform. One for the um, control plane, so mm -hmm. the AS service itself, and one is for the nodes, for the node pools. So each node pool will have its own version. So first you have to upgrade the control plane, okay. your main version of uh, AKS. Mm -hmm. Once you reach the version needed, then uh, and only then you can start upgrading your nodes to that same version. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so what was the recent challenge that you have faced uh, uh, in the AKS and what was it and how how did you resolve it? Recent challenge, upgrading for example, was a challenge. If you leave it uh, too long without upgrading, mm -hmm. that will, st will start being a challenge because you cannot create new node pools and you can create, uh, yeah, you can create new node pools until you upgrade basically your cluster. That was one challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that case, you start uh, to do multiple upgrades to be able to reach the latest versions because um, at some point you're capped at the upgrade you can do. So you can only go two versions up and then you upgrade that, you upgrade your nodes. Then once that's done, you can upgrade to the next version, etc. So that was one challenge. Uh, other challenges, 
Um, right now in AKS, one challenge we have is the storage. Storage, okay. Uh, yeah, so recently in the UAE region, uh, there was the availability zones that went general availability. And uh, only that, but not the storage. So we were using, before we were using AKS with managed disks. And uh, when, we, uh, when we move to uh, availability zones, the disks are not on availability zones. So there, there is no zone redundant storage. So that was a challenge. So we had to move, instead of using managed disks, we started using file shares because file shares are zone redundant. Mm -hmm. uh, but that brought, again, a series of problems because not all the applications support uh, file storage. Uh, some need disk storage. So yeah, that was another big challenge. Okay, okay, all right. Um, so we have this Azure policy and Azure blueprints in AKS. Uh, mm -hmm. So like what is the difference and what to use when? Blueprints I never used, policies we use. Okay. Policies is enforcing some rule, for example. So we use them for security uh, to not allow uh, root uh, privileges uh, or a container to run as root or a container to gain root privileges or we network security. Yeah. So we're using those kind of uh, okay. uh, those kind of policies, but blueprints, uh, no, I haven't used before. Okay, um, no problem. I'll just walk you through like what exactly is blueprints. Um, so uh, blueprints is a service uh, mm. that helps you to automate the deployment of uh, uh, the consistent uh, environments in Azure. So if you use uh, blueprints, uh, you can define a repeatable set of resources, policies and configuration. Uh, like that... an ARM tem template? Sorry? Like an ARM template? Um, ARM template? Kind of exactly, but ARM templates possibly uh, a lot of people use for to create the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, this is more in terms of deployment. Um, uh, Kubernetes resources. Yeah, uh, deployments. Okay. And uh, uh, when you uh, create ARM templates, right, you create an infrastructure out of it. Now, a lot of people do not use ARM. Bicep is there, I think. Uh, a lot of people moved on Terraform. So uh, this is a bit different. So in the context of AKS, uh, if you, uh, Azure you use uh, Azure Blueprint, you can define standard configuration for AKS cluster. Uh, most famous are the network security and secure network settings and security controlled. Uh, you can specify the policies that need to be uh, enforced on all AKS cluster, uh, just just like Azure policy rules. And there are multiple other things as well. So yeah, uh, that's that's one thing. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I'm good over here. Uh, 